What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 8 of The Climb here with Luzanak. We've been here a week everyone in real world time, in, in game time. It's been a, over a year at this point. Uh, we're back again. We're in the National Free, and of course last episode we started season number 2. And let me tell you now, I'm a big fan, a big far fan perhaps, of the transfer dealings we've done since you were last here. I've said dealings like it's plural. I've signed one player. It's this guy here. I mean, look at him. Jefferson Farfan. He looks petrified in his picture. And to be fair, this is the facial expression that defenders around the league are going to be pulling. Yes, the Peruvian international has joined us. Uh, he was released by Locomotive Moscow last season. He's been looking to get into a coaching role. I can't give him a coaching role, but he's decided that actually he fancies a trip, you know, away. He's enjoyed the cold of Russia. He's now going to get to enjoy, I want to say, the cold of the south of France. But the reality is that it's only really snowy for a few months a year in the Pyrenees, um, at least in most parts of it. From my own experience, I've been there once. I went to Andorra. Um, that, that's another story. Another time. Another Jack, talk about Jefferson. He's really good, isn't he? Um, he's far too good for this level. Um, for us, I think he is going to be playing as an advanced playmaker. Um, it's a bit of a shame, really, that he's you know naturally a winger, but he's kind of lost his pace. It's to be expected when he's 36 next month, but with his player traits of knocks the ball past opponents, there's a little bit of a concern there. But I'm thinking that for us, as far as advanced playmakers on support go for this level, he's going to be a really good addition. He hasn't yet made his debut. That's what today is for. So... I can't really tell you if he's going to be a good or bad dealing. But on the face of it, I mean, fingers crossed, he looks good. And, and I'm, I, I'm confident. I'm confident. And well, I feel even more confident because of how well our team has been doing. We've not made any other signings, so we can get straight into the results since you're last here. And though so far this season, across six league games, we are unbeaten with four wins and two draws. Now, of course, last episode we drew against Agd. Their media prediction was sick, but they currently sit third in the league. Uh, I believe we're behind them perhaps even just on goal difference, but yeah, it turns out they were very, very good, and actually a nil-nil draw against them probably wasn't the worst result in the world, uh, and since then we've strung together some good results, as I've already alluded to, so let's talk about them. Uh, the first of these was against Olympique Alès Chevenon, uh, it was a 4-0 win, great variety of goal scorers, and nice to see the old guard continuing to chip in, Walid Chenine, Enguala, and also Chinchilla, three of the four goal scorers in this game, also Castiang coming up with a goal, he's had a, a good little start so far, three goals and two assists he is our naturally our advanced playmaker he's probably gonna be a little bit upset about the fact i have signed jefferson farfan i'm sure there's gonna be some rotation needed and we'll, we'll figure out how it's all gonna to fit together um i guess in the coming weeks i mean for all i know farfan could be another pongol and get injured all the time so one win was good two wins even better and our first win at home at this level it was against Aush football uh, and it was Birene bar at the back post lurking away actually scored two goals not too dissimilar to one another in this run of results and uh, you may have noticed from the fact it was a corner goal. I am starting to take set pieces a little bit more seriously now. Um, last year, I kind of left them on the default ones. This year, new level, new seriousness. We're not amateur anymore. Um, we are amateur. You, you know what I mean? We've, we've left the amateur leagues. We have to take things seriously. And seriously, we have taken them. And we continue to take them seriously. As we got an away draw against Balma. Um, these are a team who are kind of mid-table. They're predicted to finish mid-table. Kind of around the era that our board predicted us to finish. Away from home. 1-1 probably isn't the worst result in the world. Uh, they got the lead through Vorin, and uh, well, it was Castiang turning up with a goal. A really, really nice finish for him, as I said. Uh, one of three that he scored so far this season. And while in the next game against Hierez, a team who I almost live comed against until I saw their start to the season. We beat them 1-0. Karen Buali with it, which was nice in terms of variety of goal scorers. They were one of the teams that I was a bit fearful of. Right now, they sit 10th in the league. They have not had the start uh, that they would have dreamt of. In fact, they've only won one of their opening games. I mentioned before how I thought we were joint third or fourth with Agd. We're actually in second. That shows how little I've kept track of things in the last week of results. Um, but you can see here, just looking at it, it's incredibly close at the top, and it does seem like Canet Roussillon could be a team that we are going to be, well, just a little bit fearful of this season. We've got them in a little over a month's time. That's probably when we'll be back next time, depending on how these next set of results go, I suppose. So anyway, the most recent result was against AS Fabriguez. I'm going to hope that that's correct. A 4-1 win here, though. Really good result. Barane Bar, as I said, getting another goal. It wasn't the same goal as the last one. There, there is a difference. Uh, and then Sega Keita, on his debut, finally, Sega gets on the score sheet. Hasn't played nearly enough. Uh, Karen Buardi then chipped in with another goal in the first half. 
And, uh, well, it was 4-0 before it was 4-1. Uh, really nicely worked passing play. And Castiang with a low-driven finish. Always good to score four goals. Always difficult to lose a game when you score four goals as well. And, uh, yeah, that is perhaps the best result of the season. Away from home against Havri Gers. Yes, they are a team that haven't played particularly well. But, actually, I thought our overall performance was just really, really solid against them. So, anyway, this is how the league table looks. We currently sit in second. We are one of two teams unbeaten. And, of course, we've now got Farfan in our team. We're just strengthening things up. Uh, since you were last here, I have been experimenting with a starting 11, trying to work out what I think is our best 11. Um, I feel a little bit harsh just plonking in Farfang for Castiang, because Castiang had such a great start to the year. Knowing that Farfang's natural fitness isn't the best, and well, his uh, current match fitness isn't quite there, maybe I'll start Castiang today and Farfan off the bench. He can come on, he can get the winner. That's how I'm envisaging it. But this is the team we've been going with. Now, you might have noticed Mutaki has not been on the score sheet, and there is a simple reason for that. He's not been playing for us. He was due to come back for the second game of the season, and then in that second game of the season that we did win 4-0... He got injured for another three weeks. I am really hoping that this isn't the beginning of just an injury run for El Mutaki that's going to cause all kinds of issues. He was so good for us last year. He is, by all accounts, our best player, maybe with the exception of Farfan now. Um, only one start, two appearances on off the bench. He was subbed off prematurely because he got injured. The two sub-appearances, he didn't have the biggest impact in the world on. And I'm a little bit concerned, but we're going to keep faith with him. He's back in the starting 11 today. He's back from injury, built up a little bit of match fitness. Let's see how he gets on. Uh, at the back, this is this kind of back four that I'm currently playing. It's still very experimental. Lazmi's played here and there. But at the moment, I am enjoying watching Yannick Bilek play. Uh, so far, three appearances in the league, a 7.2 rating for the Djibouti International, continuing to play for the national team as well. And he's been playing alongside Robert. Uh, Gilbert and Gola's had a really good start uh, in net. Karim Buali, I've got a little eye on, to be honest, because I talked about it you know, last season that, that I was fearful of that day where it would come where all the red arrows started to appear on his physicals. We may be approaching that day, ladies and gentlemen. Although, two goals for him so far. He's been popping up in the right place at the right time on set pieces. And at 33 years old, he's still got something to offer us. Um, I am, you know, already kind of lining up possible replacements. Of course, we've got Bru Girard, who played right back a decent amount last year. And of course, we also have the new signing of this season, uh, Fakay, who uh, we signed off Fokay, perhaps. Um, another kind of versatile option. He's a pretty good right back as well. And in fact, if you just compare him with Karim Bouali, there's not a world of difference between them to the point where actually Fokay perhaps needs to start being embedded into the team that little bit more. In fact, He's a lot better than I realised he was compared to Karim Buali. Um, at the same time, Karim Buali is putting in good performances right now. He's got a 7.38 rating uh, on average so far this season, so it would feel harsh to drop him. Dezon at left-back has perhaps been the underperformer of our back four. Um, his physicals have started to drop off completely, which is not entirely great. Uh, nevertheless, six appearances, a 7.03 average rating. It's not actually that bad. Um, it's just that I have my, I guess, benchmark set very high because of how well we've played elsewhere. In the midfield, still rotating things around a little bit, but Bar and Chinchilla have played for the most part. They've still got that good link. Nguala has stepped up to this level really good. Four assists to his name in six league games. A really good return for a player who obviously was naturally a striker. You can see he is now officially naturally a left attacking mid as well. Um, showing a few signs of development, I want to see him improve that little bit more. You know, he's got that potential. He needs to start to fulfil it. Of course, last year, that long-term injury really held him up. Castiang, talked about him already. Fantastic start to the year. El Mutaki, been out with injuries. Hopefully, he's going to get the goals today. And Sega, uh, I mean, unfortunately, you know, he had the injuries to start the season. But he got a goal last game on his debut. Wasn't entirely match fit for that. Let's see what he can do today. And while today we take on Rodas Averon, uh, who are a team whose stadium we currently share with. So we're actually playing them in their own stadium in our home game. Of course, they're a two and a half hour drive away. They currently sit in ninth. So a team who were predicted to do reasonably well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they've been a bit of a disappointment so far. Predicted to finish sixth currently. Oh, this is their first team. God damn it, it does this every time. I don't want to look at their first team. I want to look at their second team. I guess we'll just go to the league prediction. Football manager, please. I hate B teams in football manager. It just ruins everything. Uh, but you can see here, their prediction was foot second. So they are a very, very good team for this level. Um, we'll have to see how we get on, I suppose. So we've talked about the starting 11. On the bench, we've got Lazmi, Bruce Gerard, Ant, Deleuze, who's been a little bit of a disappointment since he joined. I thought he might dislodge Chinchilla as our centre mid option. 
still need to give him time to develop, still need to give him time to bed in. If we just directly compare the two, um, you would say that he's probably got the edge over Chinchilla, really. But in terms of on the field performances, he's just not quite matched him. And Chinchilla's actually done really, really well so far. Um, obviously, Farfan is in. Shanine makes his way down to the bench, I feel like, with the addition of uh, Sega. Um, Shanine's starting days may be numbered, although, to be fair, three assists, one goal. With Sega out injured, he has actually stepped up and done reasonably well out on the right-hand side. So, if he needed to come back in, I'm not overly concerned. What I am concerned about is our striking options, because El Mutaki's been out injured. Boo Frizzy joined us, of course, from Fun last year. He didn't score in four starts. Despite all the goals we've been scoring, he's not been showing a return. He is on the bench today. I need an impact for him and from him. We'll have to see if he can give it if we are chasing this game. But as I said, we're at home, feeling good. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so we're taking on Rodez Avarion, and I had a comment yesterday saying, Jack, what's wrong with your hair? So, story time, everyone. It's very hot in England at the moment, and where I live in England, it is about 35 degrees when I record these videos during the day. Um, that's like 95 degrees Fahrenheit for you North American folk, um, which you might go, that's not hot. We don't have aircon. I'm sat under studio lighting. I have a thermometer in my flat. Yesterday when I recorded, it was 40 degrees under my lights. It was horribly, horribly hot. I've got, I mean, I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of it. Just know that yesterday's video was sat recorded with my feet in a cold bucket of water to try and keep me cool. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway, that's the suffering I go through. If that isn't worth a like on this video, I have no idea what is. In fact, yesterday my hair wax was melting. Um, I'm hoping it's going to hold up today. It's not quite as hot. And while we're hot in form, and then Gaiala, I thought was going to keep his hot form going. He's hit it just over the crossbar. Hopefully a sign of things to come. Of course, last episode, a nil-nil boring draw. I feel like I owe you guys some entertainment. Can we possibly deliver it? Bilek, back to Gibert. Wouldn't say he's known for his distribution, Gibert, but we tried to ask him to keep things simple where he can. And well, to be fair, maybe I should eat my humble pie and eat my words. That is a fantastic ball by him. Now with Castiang, Nguala drifting inside. Plays it back to Castiang. We've got overlap on the right-hand side. There it is, Karen Buwali to Sega. Could he get two and two? Could he get two and two? Of course he blooming can. That's what you want to see. Made his debut last time, got a goal and continues on his merry way. Oh, and Karen Buwali with another assist to add to his collection. Good start in this game, applying the pressure early on. I was terrified that we just weren't going to score again. You know, we've had such a great start to the season. It is now looking like that result last time out, given where the opposition are now in the league, sat in, set, in third while we're in second. It might not have been the worst result, nil-nil. Um, we've strung together some really good results. I was hoping that we were going to boss this game here. And while the early signs look good, 67% of the ball, Castiang with a free kick. Oh, my word. He bent it like Beckham, except he bends it a little bit too much. He goes the wrong side of the post. Um, and, well, to be fair, <laughs> I, w I wouldn't mind another goal while we're this dominant, because this is absolutely ridiculous. 64% of the ball. Just as a reminder, uh, Rodez is second team. We're predicted to finish second in the league at the start, and we are bullying them right now. Bar, now with Dez on. His physicals have been on the decline, but he can still whip in a mean ball. El Mutaki block, Castian Cater. I am disappointed that Castiang has not hit the target there and just gone for the shot. But I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, he has looks for pass rather than attempts to score. Okay, I am mistaken. Move on, everyone. But uh, yeah, still surprised he passed it. That's not a very football manager thing. Usually players are shooting at unnecessary times rather than looking to pass it. Sega's picked up an injury. That's a concern. But Karen Buali is just lurking at the back post on the volley and assisting in a goal to the 23-year-old's uh, to the 23 year -old's name. No, he's 33, Jack. He's playing like he's 23, isn't he? The fact that Sega's got a knock after he's been out with so much, well, for so much time of injury is not great news. I'm actually thinking now, let's take him off. Let's not risk it. You know, he's missed a lot of the start of the season. This is only his second start all year. We've brought in Farfan for a reason. He's a natural right attack in mid. Whilst I do think with his lack of pace, he's probably better suited to play down the middle as our advanced playmaker. I don't actually think it's the worst result, uh, well, not the worst result, the worst idea in the world to play him down uh, the right-hand side, you know, with his 10 acceleration and 10 pace, whilst by Jeff Jefferson's Farfan's own standards, that is pretty atrocious. By the National Free standards, that's pretty blooming good. So a regular winger in Sega is replaced with a veteran winger in Farfan. I mean, he's, he's, he's head and shoulders above everyone else in this league. I'm expecting magical moments. I'm expecting him to just be... I don't know, it's like when you, you, you play park football as a kid growing up and there's always that one kid who's better than everyone else. I'm hoping that's going to be Farfan. 
Castiang already had one good free kick effort. Could he score the second? No, he hits the woodwork. He's getting closer, everyone. He's hit one wide. He's hit the woodwork now. With the next one, surely he's got to score. That's how this works, right? Been a bit of a more tame second half here, but 2-0 up, looking very much in control. I'm going to bring in Chinine for Castiang, so he's not going to get that goal. Go try Farfan down the middle. Chinchilla's not at the best of games, so let's bring in Deleuze for another brief spell on the pitch. I am quite conscious of the fact that Deleuze has made a lot of his appearances on off the bench. Lost a lot less time for him to, I suppose, have impacts on the game. Maybe need to give him a start to us. Farfan, oh my word, that was a, an ambitious header. It's actually hit the woodwork and gone over. I mean, it's his first chance that we've seen in, uh, well, in Luzanak colours. And now he's making the overlapping run. Go on. F oh, wait, no, that's Shanine. Farfan, you're in the middle now, mate. Karen Buali crosses it. And now he's at the woodwork unintentionally, completely. Nguala to El Mutaki. Oh, and he's now missed it as well. How has this remained only 2-0 this half? There's been so many chances and we just can't find a way through. I mean, the good news is, they've not had a shot on target all game, and as far as good performances go, that's probably one of the best. Asane Karambuali, player of the batch. Give give that man, I don't know, the bottle of champagne. I doubt you get a bottle of champagne at this level, but we'll buy one especially for him. Uh, it looks like Kane Roussillon may have slipped up as well. They drew 2-2 against Stad Bokarawa. Uh, We'll just call you Stad. <laughs> That's not a good name for them, Jack. They're in sixth. To draw that game is absolutely atrocious for them, but it does make things very interesting at the top. Ourselves and Kene Roussillon separated by goal difference, although theirs is better. Agd, who we drew nil-nil against, only one point behind us. And there's only that one promotion spot this year. This could go... Well, I want to say down to the wire. It's still very early days, but it could be a bit of a big battle. Uh, you can see here, good news, Sega Kieta only out for one to two days. It's been a bit unfortunate that we've had so many injuries to start the season because the first couple of months are very, very packed. But with it being a 26-game season, whilst there are a few cup games to bear in mind, you know, our actual league campaign is very spread out. So injuries in the second half of the season aren't going to be as disastrous because the players are missing fewer matches. Unfortunately for us, that's not been the case now where we've had the likes of El Mutaki out, Sega's been out. Um, you know, two players who I put a lot of stock in. They are two of our better players for certain. You can see here, um, if we just sort by ability, they're the, theoretically the third and fifth best players. Although quite how much you want to trust stars, I'll let you decide. I don't trust them one little bit. They're a load of rubbish, aren't they? But anyway, second in the league, things going pretty well. Obviously, only seven games into the season, but that's still coming up to a third of the way through. In ter terms of when we're going to be back next time, we're going to come back for the game against Canet Roussillon. Uh, they currently sit top of the league. It's going to be a battle of the big dogs. Between then and now, a couple of cup games just to keep an eye on. We'll see how we get on. If we get on a cup run, fantastic. But obviously, the main focus this year just has to be the league. Fundamentally, you know, we want to be climbing up this year if we can, despite being amateur. And so far, the signs are looking rather promising that that might be something that is achievable. And uh, well, hopefully that's going to continue to be the case to in tomorrow's episode. So anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. Thank you so much for your support, as always. I've seen a load of you playing along with this save game. Um, I've seen loads of people suggesting different players that have come up as free agents. What I've learned from testing this database prior to playing it is the players that are available differ quite a lot. So if you've managed to snap up Farfan, let me know in the comments. If you've managed to snap up someone else, let me know. Uh, Football Manager says that they play out differently each and every time. I've seen people signing Yaya Sonogo, for example. Um, he's at Stoke in the Premier League on this save game, so I don't think we're going to be acquiring him. Although it would be quite useful, wouldn't it? So yeah, that's going to wrap up things for me. I've said that twice already. I'm just rambling on and getting deja vu. Let's cut things off here. I'll see you tomorrow. It is me, Jack. I can't shut up. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>